My name is Eli. I'm Nicole. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And we're the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. And I think we cut off the very first of us every time um, because we're trying to dial us in and trying to get our stick correct, but I don't know if we got it, but we are trying and we are so thankful that you guys are with us today. It is a Shabbat of Yahuwah and it is a blessed day. It is a hopeful day. It is a new day. And gentlemen, we've had a wild week. Um, we've had dog fights. I have uh, eight of my ten fingers back. Um, mostly doing well. I can almost make a fist in both hands now. And um, things are good on that side. Kate, how you doing? Good. What's going on? Um, it's a Shabbat. Just kind of get these sermons out of here and get them, get them going. Um, had to deal with some cows this week. Yeah, the kids are a little defeated. They all look a little beat up here. I got... Uh, Two of three that look okay. One doesn't look so good, but it was a long night. So, um, all right. How's everybody? Nicole, how are you doing? I'm good. You're good? And you survived the week? Yes. Okay, that's good. You can speak in the mic, though, sometimes. That would be great. I know, but the dog's in my way. The dogs are definitely in the way. All right, Eli, how you doing? Good. What did you learn this week? Um, there's lots of bugs and flour. There's lots of bugs and flour, yes. And um, we have, uh, our creator has provided a lot of flour for us, but um, we end up with a tremendous amount of bugs, and the bugs can only stay in the flour for so long and uh, before they, they make the flour really bad. And so that is about it. Um, gentlemen, you guys read over Leviticus 1 and 2 because you were, you were a little bit behind on this. What did you guys read and what did you discover, Jade? Um, it was just basically instructing guys on how to do a sacrifice, on what kind of sacrifice it is, whether it's a grain offering or it's a burnt offering, how you do it. He uh, have instructions on what to give and how to burn it. Right, and you must add a lot of salt into it. Smile, kid. You'll be all right. You'll be all right, huh? Um, yeah, so how to do it? Why do we need to add a whole bunch of salt, Cade? Um, I don't actually know. I don't know if it makes the flavor uh, for the Kohenum better. Like, y'all wants people to have some actual good-tasting food. Or if he comes down and uh, smells it and it, that smell of salt makes it smell better, uh, I don't actually know. What happens if it, like, goes up and he virtually eats us somehow? Or somehow he actually makes us, uh, he, he's eating it. I mean, Maybe. you think he's eating it? Do you think we're Yaz? Prep. Do you think he has a kitchen up there? Probably. I, I don't know. I would assume so. All right. Hey, here, before we go around, I, Eli, give me give me two things that you're blessed with. Give me two things and, and just give me any blessings. I will start. I told you guys one time I thought of the pit bulls were my blessings, but I said the sun. The sun was a blessing, and I will still continue off that the sun um, is one of Yah's greatest designs, one of the greatest things that I believe is a blessing for all mankind. Not only does it give us light, it gives us heat. It gives us power. It gives us a little bit of everything, and it's an amazing design. There's one. Eli. Um, a roof over our heads. That is amazing. That is definitely amazing. That's the thing to be blessed about. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of people without roofs over their heads. Um, a lot of people with, um, like, you know, I, we're blessed because we have 10 roof, and we're actually, we're in a poor country, and this is what poor countries do, but I found from other family that we have, um, that there's even poorer families that they they just use mud and they use um, I don't know if it's poor or if it's actually richer people um, because uh, the, I think the poorer that you are the richer you are in Yah and um, I, I truly believe that I, I don't you know it, it our Messiah said it that it's easier for a, a a camel to go through the eye of a needle or a rope to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to inherit the kingdom. And I believe that Yah blesses those who are, are definitely poor and poor in, in spirit as well. Jade, give me some blessings. Uh, animals. Animals are a blessing from Yahuwah. They become our friends. They are there for us. They are there to keep us company or to give us food. Yeah, give us food. And you guys learned a lot about that this week, right? I mean, this was this was a, a broken time. I explained this to everybody yesterday. I, I broke up. I've never, ever done a video, ever where I've ever shed tears on a video in, in years and years on YouTube and years and years and all this stuff and all the trials and tribulations we've had. Um, even when they raided our house, I've never, ever had tears. Yesterday I had tears and it was because you guys were broken after I had to end the cow's life. I, I saw the, the anguish and the breakness in your guys' eyes. And, um, 
that was our friend, right? And that friend is gone. But yeah, animals are absolutely a blessing. And um, it's the dogs and, and all animals in, 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 thing, in, in general. Now, this is something interesting on the side of animals is that they every single species of everything has its own ways, right? We know the ways of the, of the pit bull dog. Um, we know some ways the cows, but there's like critters out there, right? There are all these different critters. They have their own clans. They have their own people. They have their own ways. Like ants, for example. Ants run in packs. They run in, in colonies. And somehow, one of them just figures out where they're going to go. The other one follows in suit. And they all end up, and they, they, they work together as a fine oiled machine. And if you see the ants running, you know, they'll have like leaves on their back. And they're, they're all transporting stuff. But who's, who's telling these ants this? Who's telling them that they need to go gather or that they need to go? We had an ant infestation a while ago, and they were crawling into our house, huge ones. Um, somebody just at some point, a leader ant, or how did they decide when they, when they go around like that? Every one of y'all's creations are extremely amazing, all the way down to the very itty-bitty things that we can't even see, the bacterias and things. All right, Cade, give me some blessings. Um... There's a papaya tree that grew right out our back door. Um, we don't know how it grew up. It just grew up, and now it's providing papayas. That's a blessing. Yeah, we are in a state of, uh, you know, it's it, the life of being poor is, is also a life of not eating what we used to eat. And so we are learning the ropes. And, yeah, there is a giant papaya tree. Um, and it reminds me of the book of Adam and Eve where Satan tried to hide... Um, their their almonds and figs. it was a fig yeah it was figs and um so he went and buried it and yeah built a giant tree up out of it and it, it freaked adam out and he's like oh man this can't be this this can't be right this tree isn't in front of our cave we got lost where are we at here all right nicole what do you got the rain the rain okay that's it nothing else <laughs> Uh, it, it waters our crops. It can give us water if we need to. It fills up the creeks and waters our cows when they need water when they're out. Yeah. It, yep. I, I, I agree. And it's this is where we live in a strange um, part of the world where there's there's literally two seasons. It's wet and dry. And that is it. And the dry season, we do run out of water um, or came close to it. But wet season, it is an abundance of water like it never, ever stops. And what's interesting on these lands and where we're in the jungle is that it can suck in all of this water and it just creates huge green things. Like if, if um, we don't manage our yard inside a week or two, it, it becomes, you can't even walk through it. It's, it's a mess. Okay, um, that's, that's some good ones there. Anyone else have anything? Any other blessings? Anything you guys feel? I feel blessed because we have the Torah. I feel blessed that we had a creator that had enough oversight and enough um, understanding that he delivered us a way I also feel blessed that our creator is a holy, righteous creator, that his ways are not evil. Like if you look at the Satanists and look at the Luciferians out there and different things, they're all evil. Every, every bit of it from whatever, all the great evil that they do, every bit of it is stuff we do not want to be associated with. And so we, when we look at the ways of our creator, it's about, you know, keeping your clothes on. It's about being good people it's about taking care of your neighbor it's about helping out it's return not stealing stuff right and and the people that are against yah's ways and maybe not by their by uh you know themselves saying i'm against yah's ways but simply by them not keeping the law statutes and commands of our creator um I, I feel blessed that we have we have such a guidelines and we have the rules and that we have regulations and that we have a way that we are going to be tested and the way that we are going to be judged and the way that we are going to be judged, there can be no other way but by our hearts and by the Torah. And um, I, I believe that if we didn't have that or if we weren't given this guidelines, we wouldn't know things and we would be eating pig, we'd be drinking blood and steaks and things and different things of that nature, we wouldn't know. And so our creator loves us enough that not only did he design a beautiful ecosystem, a beautiful land, a beautiful world, that we have with, with beautiful people out there. And um, that, that's what I feel blessed. One of the last blessings I have before we get into this is I feel very blessed with the people that are with this channel. Um, there's, there's a tremendous amount of, there's a, like I've said before, there's a lot of subscribers, but our, the subscribers are just merely travelers. They're traveling through, they're coming in and they, they come and they go. Because they, they love the music and then they split when they hear the message. And for those who have not split and those who, who listen, 
um, that's those are our family, and it's not just our family, but it's the family that Yah has provided us, an extended family. And there's so many caring people out there. And you know, when we were broken down, we had terrible days. You know, we have Shauna from with Hamil, Hannibal Gray. She's our she's our tribe over in 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 um, Hawaii. And um, she literally lives with a whole tribe. And so her tribe is our tribe, Sylvie Ewarts. We've adopted her. Um, she's, she's part of our tribe, Clarissa Cotton. Um, keep naming them, boys. Keep going here. Help Carla. me out. Carla. Well, grand, uh, granny. The grand, yeah, the grand. Um, we love our granny. She's, she, we adopted her. And these are, these are literally people that we talk to mo way more than our own family by far. And when we are struggling... When we are down, um, I knew that we would have people out there that would hold us up. And that is a, a tremendous feeling because this is a dark world in a world that nobody really cares. And, you know, Fearmonger and his son and, you know, just this, the vast amount of people out there. Ali Empanada, um, we saw her talking yesterday. And, and so you guys are our, our family. And if we don't mention you, it's simply because our minds are, are not there. But everybody who who literally comments that is part of our tribe is is our family. And I feel very, very blessed that in such a dark time in this world, we are starting to pick up people across the world um, that we call family. And that is that is a huge thing. When you're in our family, it's like you're in a gang here. You're right. You're in Yaw's gang and you have the you have the bad gang. You have the gang of, of evil. And then you have people that are have huge hearts and that people know the will when, when we're when we're surrounded by people that know the heart and mind and will of our creator. Those people are amazing. And it is amazing to be with you guys and it's amazing to talk to you guys. And we literally have just a bigger family and we, we can't thank you guys enough. Do you have anything you want to add? No. All right. So with that, we're going to read a couple chapters. We'll see how far that goes. Uh, it's going to make a noise here. Sorry. As I put my little stand out and I begin with my handy dandy split screen, which hopefully it never fails me because it always thinks it is. Um, Leviticus 2, I'm still, oh, there's 3. And we are here. All right. So we have, right now, we have a total of 50 commands. We And one or two of those, we don't know if they're going to stay or not. But for the moment, we have literally 50 commands and we are in the third book. And this book is Leviticus. This is the book that everybody's like, oh, well, you can't keep the laws. Nobody can keep the laws. You can't keep sacrifice. And that is the very first by default thing that people will tell you when you're like, oh, you keep the laws of God. Oh, you, you sacrifice on your altar. Ha ha ha. And you're like, no, because it, it, they don't understand it. And it, it's sad they don't understand that. Why, why wouldn't we want to take an oxen and sacrifice it on an altar, Cade? Uh, because one, we're not ordained. Two, if we somehow messed up that offering, uh, the fire would consume us like we're about to read pretty soon in this book where it takes out two of Aaron's sons yeah, and kills yeah. them. And why else? Yeshua. We have Yeshua. Yes, Yeshua. And that's not that's probably the number one thing. So in the in the the um, after Messiah Yahushua died, the, the veil of the temple, which we're actually reading about here, is split from the bottom up. Right? Instead of something being torn, it would normally be tearing from the top down. This thing tore from the bottom up. And um, it, it signified stuff. What did it signify, Jade? That there was no longer needed to be sacrificed, that we no longer needed the tabernacle to sacrifice. The sacrifice had come, and um, he had gone, and he came back. And um, now it is by his, his offering, by his blood sacrifice. And unless you read the entire scriptures from front of the book to back, you don't get this, right? You don't get it. If you only read the New Testament and you have a Messiah there and you only spoon fed uh, certain parts of Brother Paul's writings out of that, you could easily say that, yeah, the laws of God are no more. But when you say the laws of God are no more, that means that you have no more guidelines in your life. You have no more ways that you should walk. And that is a dangerous path that we walk. If you, if you are able to go as away and, and uh, contrary to what our creator says, that means you're walking in evil because our, our creator is nothing but good. And so it is very important that we understand these laws, statutes, and commands. And this is why we are thanking you guys for hanging out with us. And we truly begin. All right, Leviticus 3. Let's see where we are so far. All right, we, did, we started rambling. We rambled 14 minutes. All right. And if his ablation be a sacrifice of peace offering, if he offer it of the herd, whether it be a male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before Yahuwah. 
And he shall lay his hand upon the head of his offering and kill it at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And Aaron's son and the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. Hold on real quick. So this is called the fellowship offering in the, in the NIV. Mine's called, in my, it says the peace offering. Okay. And so we are here. And he shall offer of the sacrifice of the peace offering, an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. The fat that covers the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards. And the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it, sh it shall he take away. Okay, so what is this saying right here? So we're killing a cow, right? We're killing whatever it is. Um, and the two kidneys and the fat that is there on and the call and the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. Okay, so that is not burned. Yeah, it wants to remove the liver, the insides, the appendage, and the kidneys. Okay, so any ideas why that stuff would be removed? I assume it would smell real bad getting burned. I think because like, it's like the stuff that cleanses your body, so it probably like, has toxins maybe. Yeah, some some toxins on there. And yeah, I'm, I'm talking to guys who just chopped up a cow, so we, we are... Yeah, we saw a lot of insides. There's like, you, you got to see the lungs and everything. Yeah, you see the lungs, you see everything, absolutely everything. It's, it's a gruesome process. This is absolutely a gruesome process. Um, does anyone not think yesterday was gruesome? No, it's um, pretty gruesome. It's it's horrible. It's a horrible thing, yeah. and it's what the only thing that saved us is that we were we didn't have to cut its throat live like the, these these Levites had to do. So that's just um, I don't know if that's I, I don't know. It's just crazy. Killing animals is crazy all in itself, and so if we think that's crazy, then we should probably not live in sin, right? If we are if we are understanding that the the life of a beautiful animal is killed. You know, why Why would we continue on sinning and, and doing this kind of stuff? All right, verse 5. And Aaron's son shall burn it on the, upon, on the altar upon the ascending smoke sacrifice, which is, made, which is upon the wood that is on the fire. It is an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. So there it is. Again, a sweet savor. So is that a smell? What did you guys have? Yours sweet was, fragrance. Sweet fragrance. So yours would be smell. Okay. Mine says a sweet and satisfying odor. Oh, Lord. Okay, so it's all smells in, right? So this is um, this is what it is. So I guess if you burn the inside appendages and things of that nature, it doesn't it, smell so good. And not, I, and uh, I an aroma. An aroma, right? Okay, so it's all about pleasing our Creator. And if, like I've mentioned a billion times, if we're spinning sixty six thousand six hundred miles an hour in one direction and and tilted at six point six degrees, and we're out there everywhere. You know how? Where's our Creator at? It makes more sense that we are on a flat stationary plane that are there's a dome above us and that somehow wherever this was our creator is able to smell this stuff so it just doesn't seem like he's billions of light years away or as, as the liars tell us all right and if his offering be uh, if his offering for a sacrifice of peace offering unto yahuwah be of the flock male or female he shall offer it without blemish if he offer a lamb for his offering then shall he offer before yahuwah and he shall lay his hand upon the head of his offering and kill it before the tabernacle of the assembly. And Aaron's sons shall sprinkle the blood thereof round about the altar. Now, this is, this is where it gets kind of gruesome right here, right? And this is because when you're laying the hand on the head, then you cut his throat, right? right. So you're, you're literally, you have, <laughs> it's the guilt offering, right? It, it goes up on and it's, it's rough. Okay. And he shall offer of the sacrifice of peace offering, an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. The fat thereof and the whole rump, it, it shall he take off hard by the backbone and the fat that covers the inwards and all the fat that is upon the, upon the inwards. And the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. Now, as we are talking about kidneys and things of this nature, what I find fascinating, I guess fascinating about this whole thing is that we are... We are essentially animals of the same thing, right? Every creation that our creator has done that breathes has kidneys, has lungs, processes air, has their noses where they are, is able to do, I mean, all of this stuff is, it's all built in the same thing, right? And so if you have, you know, like the cows, they all have their kidneys, they all have their, their stuff, the same stuff humans do. We're all, 
you know, and some people are like, well, you know, uh, a monkey you came from monkeys or you came out of thing. Right. And that's, that was all a hoax. That was all a lie. But, um, you know, that, that doesn't make any sense. Right. Because I mean, how do we all have developed lungs and developed kidneys and, you know, our kidneys are there to process bad foods. I mean, everything that we have is a, is a, an organ is a blessing that processes and the human body as, as weak as we are and frail as we are, we are actually way stronger in various ways than a lot of the animals are because we can recover ourselves. Whereas animals are, unfortunately are unable to. And, um, I just found that interesting. Anyone have anything else? I got I got a bunch of stone faced kids here. They're all they're all like uh, broken or something. All right. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. And if his offering be a goat, then he shall offer it before Yahuwah. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of it and kill it before the tabernacle of the assembly. And the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle the blood thereof upon the altar round about. And he shall offer thereof his fitting his offering, excuse me, and he shall offer thereof his offering, even an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. The fat that the cov the fat that covers the inwards, and all the fat that is up on the inwards. For mine says the entrails. I don't know what the difference is, but inwards. Just the guts and the inside of it. Uh, NIV says internal organs. Yeah. Internal organs. Yep. And the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. Yeah, those, the insides definitely smell bad after they start smelling real bad. Yeah, they do. A little experience there. Um, and the priest shall burn them up on the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire for a sweet savor. All the fat is Yahuwah's. Okay, now we are told not to eat fat. This is very interesting. Right, so you burn the fat. What does fat, what is fat, what is it exactly? Um, I, fat, it's, it's like, like a like, layer of like skin developed. Like, Alright, like, remember Evil Eric? How he would take the fat of the pigs and then would, uh... Make uh, grease, grease out, of, out it. of it. Yeah, he would make a lot. He would be, start boiling down the fat of the pigs. We had this evil guy that we knew, and um, he would, he just laughs at Yah. He was just a very evil fella, and um, he loved to rib us because we, he knows we don't uh, eat pork, and so he'd send us pictures of him boiling down pig fat. Um, and he would cook with it. every bit of his food. He would stick pig fat into it. And so everybody that was like eating any of his stuff, he was a cook, and he's selling this this terrible food. He's a terrible guy. Um, very evil in the eyes of Yahoo. So fat's kind of like a layer over. The, you kind of have to cut when you like cutting out the meat. You kind of have to separate it. Yeah. So you can get to the meat. Yeah, and it's going to sizzle, right? Because it's going right. to sizzle if you put it just a piece of fat in that. It's going to like sizzle until it like breaks down into. It's like unedible. It's like hard to chew. It's like. Yeah, we're not supposed to it's eat. It's like it, unhealthy. Though. It's like it's like an unhealthy layer of skin. Uh, yeah, it's like a I, protective I, layer, I think, to protect your organs and stuff. And Nicole then. says it's a protective layer. That must mean I'm completely protected. <laughs> that must mean I can never die. <laughs> it's all fat. It's yeah, body it's, padding. I'm yeah. saying like it protects your your organs inside you, not that you're never going to die. Hey, just hey as, a, as a fat guy, I'd rather have fat and be stabbed than be skinny and be stabbed. That's all I can say. If somebody's going to stab me with a knife, yeah, hopefully it's with... In my gut. <laughs> That's just a joke. Bad joke. All right, 17. It shall be a perpetual state statute. Sorry, I can't read it. It shall be a perpetual statute for your generations throughout all your dwellings that ye either neat, eat, either, <laughs> I can't read, that ye eat neither fat nor blood. Okay, that's a command. Command. There's a command. We finally found a command. We're out of the drought. Don't eat the fat or the blood. There it is. Commandment number 51. Don't eat the fat um, nor blood. So that that one should be its own command because we haven't had the fat before. We have don't, we have, eat, don't the eat the blood, blood but we don't right. have don't eat so the fat. So that should probably go under eat the blood and be a whole new command as well. Yeah, and so we should add this commandment. So we should add this as a new commandment and then like any of these, maybe add this back to the other commandment. Yeah, the really blood. Eat the fat. So, same. So, so is everyone good with me? Yeah. So we yeah. do this? All right, that's good. We found one. Yay. The drought is over. Yay. One commandment found. All right, so we're going to continue on. We It's a Shabbat. It's 23 minutes here. We're kind of out of power, so there's not any breakfast. Um, nothing can be heated up at this moment, which is totally fine, except the kids did just fine. All right, here we go. Leviticus 4. This is called the sin offering. Okay? And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yashrael, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of Yahuwah concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do against any of them, if the priest that is anointed do sin according to sin, the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin, which he has sinned, a young bullock without blemish in, unto Yahuwah for a sin offering. Okay, so what is it saying? 
Basically, if someone sins and like they, they do sin? it accidentally for anybody, here, the, uh, it says, the, it, says it says if anybody, and then it goes if any uh, Kohen sins. Right, and so this is why the why we have a Melchizedek priest, and why it talks. I think in Hebrews about the Melchizedek priest. Um, was that in Hebrews? Mm-hmm. Um, I believe it is. And why it is that it is so important that we have a Melchizedek priest. What what does that mean? Uh, he is a high priest, basically a perfect priest, a priest that was without sin. Right, and so our Messiah, Yahushua, became that perfect sin. And so it, it talks, I think it was in Hebrews, it even talked about that, that even the, if the old way had to have even the priests cling themselves, right? Which is spooky, right? Because if you have a priest that's living in sin and doing a whole bunch of stuff, and this guy's like trying to atone for your sins, I don't, I don't yeah, know what it is. It's not going to go well. No, and that's why we have Messiah, Yahushua, because he lived a sinless um, life of that nature. So I thought that was interesting. It's All right. in Hebrews 7. Hebrews 7. Thank you. 27 and 28. Nice. Very nice. She's very quick. Quick on the draw. Thank you, Nicole. All right. If the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin, which he has sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto Yahuwah for a sin offering. So if I was a priest, I would ta- probably take a, I would probably atone for my sin regardless because I, you know, how easy is it to sin, right? It, it's simple, easy to sin. Your thoughts can have you in sin. How, what you, you know, just your actions of, you know, um, you know, there's a lot of, what are the seven deadly sins? You guys remember those? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we remember them not too long ago. It's uh, gluttony, um, pride, greed, greed, um. A tongue that can't that speaks evil. Slothfulness. Slothfulness, yeah. So, I mean, those are all things. That's as easy as it is to break a Torah commandment and fall out of the graces of our Creator if we are not being very careful with this stuff. So, yeah, I would probably create, I would probably do my own thing every time, just in case. Even if I didn't know I sinned, then I would do it just in case. Because I wouldn't want to, like, represent for Yah without being completely clean. And he shall bring the bullock into the door of the tabernacle of the assembly before Yahuwah, and shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head, and kill a bullock before Yahuwah. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the assembly. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sh- sprinkle of the blood seven times before Yahuwah, before the veil of the sanctuary. There's that number seven again. And the priest shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar of its sweet incense before Yahuwah, which is in the tabernacle of the assembly, and shall pour all the blood of the bullock at the bottom of the altar of the ascending smoke offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. Okay, so there's blood being sprinkled everywhere again. And he shall take off from it all the fat of the bullock for the sin offering, the fat that covers the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver, with the kidneys, he it shall he take away. Did you say call? No. Okay, my... Appendage. appendage. Yeah, it's appendage. Where's his flanks? I think it's loins. That's loins. It's loins. Loins. Uh, loins what exactly legs. would that be? Loins? The in between their legs, I think. Isn't that like a loin? Isn't there like a loin roast or something? There is. So that their back haunches thing? Uh... Hmm. Alright, I don't know. Oh, instead of calls in the IV, it says long lobe. Long lobe. Oh, and the long. Oh, the call would be the liver then, right? The, call, the appendage of the liver. So. The call of the liver. Call of the liver. Okay, yeah. So it's like maybe what holds the liver in or something. Is my guess. I don't know. Ten. And it was taken off from the bullock of the sacrifice of peace offerings, and the priest shall burn them upon the altar of the ascending smoke offering, and the skin of the bullock and all his flesh, with his head and with his legs and his and his inwards and his dung. Even the, the whole bullock shall he carry forth without the camp unto a clean place where the ashes are poured out and burn him on the wood with fire. Where the ashes are poured out shall he be burnt. Okay, so that's, that's very interesting. Why, um, what, what happens down here in the south of the world if you don't, if you don't bury something? Uh, yeah, like ra- uh, or like cro- ravens, 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 huge vultures, holders, yeah. huge giant birds. And they come out and just like take off and completely decimate uh, whatever's there. Yeah, and I've I've seen an entire cow be picked apart inside of a week. Like it's like there's nothing left but the skull. And eventually that was down the road. And somebody had taken off and packed that down the road. So uh, yesterday, after the boys had to do what they had to do, and um, they left that area, there were you could look up in the sky and there were just 
zillions of birds. What you know, they buried. We buried the we rest buried of the cow. Yeah. yeah, we buried everything. But they can smell the blood for miles and miles and miles. And it's, it's crazy that Yaw's creatures are able to like sniff this stuff out, right? How, how you know we're just a little speck in the middle of nowhere, and all of a sudden we have you know a hundred giant vultures all around, and they all come down and. Um, they're crazy creatures, right? And that's why Yah has told us animals we should eat and shouldn't eat, right? You're not going to want to go kill a vulture who just had his head and, and you know, the, like this stuff right here. So this is interesting. So he takes everything of the cow or the whatever animal's being done and he burns it. And that would stop the animals from, from coming and basically just running away with it. All right, 13. And if the whole assembly of Yashrael sin through ignorance and the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly... And they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of Yahuwah concerning things which should not be done and are guilty. So how would you know if so, if nobody knew about it? How would you know they were guilty? Uh, someone found out and said something. Yahuwah puts the spirit of guilt on them. Like, and they find out what they've done. Or, uh, or yeah, they have someone that is like... Oh, maybe didn't, it, when it, didn't that happen to Joshua where they went out and fought and they all lost and they couldn't figure out why? Well, that was because someone sinned on purpose. Someone so we buried that stuff. Yeah, who said tent, uh, right? don't take it, don't take anything from Jericho, leave all their stuff, and some dude like took an entire bag of stuff and took all the gold and all under, the jewelry yeah. and put it under his tent, and they like kept getting smoted, and Joshua didn't understand until Yahoo was like. Well, you gotta find out someone sinned against me. You'll figure out who it was. And instead of telling they, me, he actually made probably him, gladly he made him go through this process, and he's like. Why would you do this when they found out? So they ended up stoning the entire that dude. Ended up getting the entire a bunch tribe of that killed. dude. Yeah, the entire family for that. Yeah. They like burned their bodies in this valley. So yeah, well, he got a lot of people killed. So, okay, when the sin which they have sinned against it is known, then the assembly shall offer a young bullock for the sin and bring him before the tabernacle of the assembly, and the elders of the assembly shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock before Yahuwah, and the bullock shall be killed before Yahuwah. And the priest that is anointed shall bring of the bullock's blood to the tabernacle of the assembly. And the priest shall dip his finger in some of the blood and sprinkle it seven times before Yahuwah, even before the veil. Seven times again, guys. So there's there's a, a cycle of sevens. And this is why I've, I keep saying that the, the Shabbat has to be on a cycle of seven. If you are keeping a Sabbath and you are starting in the middle of the year and you even call it new beginnings or whatever... That is not that is not biblical. It is it doesn't it doesn't say we should begin something outside the cycles of seven. We have to get in the cycles of seven if we want to be on the right schedule for our Shabbats. All right, eighteen, and he shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar which is before Yahuwah that is in the tabernacle of the assembly, and shall pour out all the blood at the bottom of the altar of the ascending smoke offering which is at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and he shall take all of all his fat from him and burn it upon the altar. Yah loves the burning fat smell, uh, which is why we probably shouldn't eat it. And he should, shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for a sin offering. So shall he do with this. And the priest shall make an atonement for them and it shall be forgiven them. And he shall carry forth the bullock without the camp and burn him as he burned the first bullock. It is a sin offering for the assembly. When a ruler has sinned and done somewhat through ignorance against any of the commandments of Yahuwah Eloheinu, concerning things which should not be done and is guilty or if his sin wherein he has sinned come to his knowledge he shall bring his offering a kid of the goats a male without blemish and he shall lay his hand upon the head of the goat and kill it in the place where they kill the ascending smoke offering before Yahuwah it is a sin offering and the priest shall take the blood of the sin offering with his fingers and put it upon the horns of the altar of the ascending smoke offering and shall pour out his blood at the bottom of the altar of the ascending smoke offering and he shall burn all his fat upon the altar as the fat of the sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall make an atonement for him as concerning his sin, and it shall be forgiven him. And if any one of the common people sin through ignorance, while he does somewhat, while he does somewhat against any of the commandments of Yahuwah concerning things which ought not to be done and be guilty, or if his sin which he has sinned come to a knowledge then he shall bring his offering, a kid of the goats, a female without blemish, for his sin, which he has sinned. All right, this is a topic all in of itself. What does this mean right here? Basically, if one of us sinned, we got to bring like a goat. Well, there, there's something beyond this because this part right here, this talks about 
Um, these people sin in ignorance, right? What does that mean to sin in ignorance? Uh, it's like you by mistake, they didn't know they actually. It's like us back eating pork, right? When we did not know we were we were Christians, and all food had been made cling by you know uh, the preacher and so and Paul, <laughs> and so we were sitting there eating pig in in thing. So this is what it's talking about. Is it's talking about a remembrance sin. So this is the thing: is if you guys are say laying in bed one night and you guys remember something you guys did as a child that was great evil that is where we need to basically call upon the, the messiah's name you know in a prayer and and be forgiven for this because if this was something that they did in ignorance that they they figured out later that they they're like oh man we got we got to do this and it's understanding and when we come to the knowledge of the torah and understand this then we know what sin is but prior to this we we all lived in sin and i was talking to the boys this morning us coming out of babylon Man, I grew up in Babylon. I was I used to be watching horrible movies and horrible stuff on TV. It was just horrible stuff that even to this day is not out of my mind. And it's stuff I've never let the kids watch. We've never watched TV. We well, when they were kids, real kids they did. But we've never we don't have TV. It's been nine, eight, seven, eight years. I don't know how long, but it's been a long time. And we don't watch any of that. And so it's, you know, the eyes are the windows to the soul, but we can easily sin. Um and, you know, there's there's a tremendous amount of dangers. And that's that's a, a danger with adultery. And adultery is as easy as looking at a woman with lust in your eyes. That is as easy as it is. And we, you know, you're never, ever supposed to take your eyes off your spouse, ever. And so that it's, it's a problem. Okay, here we go. Where are we at? Are we in 29? We are on... He has me at 29 at the top. Yes. Okay. So anyway, that, that is that is something to remember, right? If we come up and we start remembering these sins and we start feeling guilty about them, we need to be atoned for them. And we need we need Messiah, Yahushua's blood. Okay. And he shall lay, 29, and he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering and slay the sin offering in the place of the sinning smoke offering. And the priest shall take of the blood thereof and with his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of the ascending smoke offering and shall pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. And he shall take away all the fat thereof, as the fat is taken away off of the sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And the priest shall make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. And if you bring a lamb for a sin offering, he shall bring it a female without blemish. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering and slay it for a sin offering in the place where they kill the ascending smoke offering. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering with his fingers finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of the ascending smoke offering and shall pour out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. 35. And he shall take away all the fat thereof as of, as the fat of the lamb is taken away from the sacrifice of the peace offerings and the priest shall burn them upon the altar according to all the, to the offerings made by fire unto Yahuwah and the priest shall make an atonement for his sin that he has committed and it shall be forgiven him. All right, gentlemen. Um, maybe we'll just call that one good. We have it, and it'll be a Shabbat of rest. Um, hopefully to all of you guys out there. Um, guys, thank you very, very much for listening in. Um, my catatonic boys, it's been a rough week, so they're all, they're all a little catatonic. They gave me a little smirk here. Um, but they, 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 it's been a rough week, and you can definitely tell how weeks and how, um, bad stuff weighs upon families and all of us. And, um, all I can say is this this family will dust ourselves off. We will wipe our tears. We will stand up and we will rise up again. And we, you know, I guess that is for everybody, right? If you guys are having those kind of weeks and it just seems hopeless and it seems despair and there's no hope anywhere. Um, this is exactly what I was trying to explain to the boys this morning is we must absolutely seek the kingdom to come. The world that we have here is, is passing. It's fading. You know, I've spoken about this before. But it is, it is truly on the way out. And it seems like if, if there were two teams and there was Yaz team and Hasatan's team, it seems like the majority of the world, I would say it's got to be over 95% of the world, as by default, if they are not interested in our creator and are not worshiping as our creator has said, they're not you know, sanctifying and, and taking the mark of the day, which is the Sabbath. That is the only way that separates people from anything, you know, and that is where commandment keeping begins, I believe, is, is when you start understanding that the seventh day is blessed. It is a, ble is a day blessed other than anywhere else. And this is a day that we, um, we rest. We, this is where we, we dust ourselves off, right? We, we make it to the Shabbat. 
and we dust ourselves off. This is why Yah has given us a day like this so that we can we can regroup, we can recap, we can fine tune our understanding of what our Creator says and rest, rest, rest. So with that, you know, I I would ask you guys if you had anything else, but. Uh. Uh, basically if you sin you should repent <laughs> yeah. if, if you sin by mistake or even sin by knowing you should definitely repent yeah my lead guy Cubby he's he's uh, he's he's a little tired today so hopefully we'll have him back on the next time that we do this which should be tomorrow um, which we will do tomorrow same time same place you guys can catch us and um, we'll be putting this out until we get through the Torah and even then we might just continue on with it because reading the Torah in the morning is, is definitely a good thing for everybody so Shabbat Shalom everybody thank right. you so Hello. much Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Nicole? Shabbat shalom. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.